My sermon today is called Dear John. Dear John. I, I, I don't even know if, how I want to ask this question, but does, does anyone know what a Dear John letter is? I, I, hope, I wasn't expecting you to raise your hands. I, I hope that means you wrote, well, I, I hope you didn't receive one. Let's just put it that way. A, a Dear John letter is a letter that you basically send someone who loves you, who you no longer love. I mean, it's Dear John. There's some affection still. I mean, you once were in love with this person, but as the note says, game over. <laughs> the love did not last. The person who writes the Dear John letter is a victor, right? <laughs> so they're the one that broke off the relationship. What I want to talk to you today about is writing a dear John letter to the devil. What I want to talk to you about is breaking up a relationship with someone you were once in love with. And, and you know, whenever you break up a relationship with someone you were once in love with, you know, it, it, it just is this way, Marvin. You know it's this way, right? You, not that you ever got a Dear John letter. <laughs> but you know there's like still these lingering emotions, right? I don't want to do show of hands if you've been through a nasty breakup. But a wise man once said, on the way to every blissful marriage is a train wreck someplace. And when you get a Dear John letter, or you send a Dear, dear John letter, the reason you, you start Dear John and not Dork John, or Dumb John, or Dog John, is because there's still some lingering emotional bond. And, and that's normal whenever you break up a relationship that you, when you were once in love with someone, but the problem, the danger, the reality of lingering feelings with your relationship with the devil is that lingering feelings can lead you back into destructive relationships, destructive behaviors, lingering attachments that you know you have decided are no longer healthy for you to be involved with. See, my, my, my hearing is, 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 is dampened today, so I don't know if you guys understand that. You write a Dear John letter to end a destructive relationship. You write a Dear John letter when you understand it's a one-way relationship. You write a Dear John letter when you understand that it's not healthy for you to stay any longer in this relationship. But what do you do when you send your dear John letter to the devil and he sends it return to sender. When, when he doesn't open your letter, when he keeps pretending as if you're still in love with him, and the problem is with people who once loved you and who you once loved is they know exactly how you need to be loved. <laughs> they know exactly how to pull the heartstrings. They know exactly the right things to say, the right things to offer, the right things to lure you back into the romance. Come on, baby. Wasn't it good? Didn't I buy you chocolates? 
Isn't this your favorite latte? What about a just, uh, you know, I'm not saying we gotta get, boy, what about a little Netflix and chill? <laughs> it's harmless. But if you write a Dear John letter, you better write that Dear John letter because you're done with the devil. The problem we have is, is, is we're, 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 the problem we have is we're like Peter. N not, not Peter the elder, but, but Peter the apostle. We're like Peter. In, 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 in one side of our mouth, we're, 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 we're saying things like, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the living Son of God. Jesus, I will go where you go. Jesus, I will die for you. But, but, but it's, here's the thing. It's really hard to be in a new relationship when part of you is still in the old relationship. Are you with me this morning? Because that's the problem Peter has. His mouth is saying, Jesus, you are the Messiah. Jesus, you are the living Son of God. Jesus, I know who you are. And Jesus is saying to him, I have prayed for you because the devil plans to shift you. <laughs> and when you really mean that you love me, you will be converted. And I think that it's not just Peter. I think it's part of the problem with the Western church. With our mouths, we say we love God. With our mouths, we confess empty Valentine's cards to God. If you listen to our prayers on Sabbath morning, we sound like the Hallmark Channel. But if you look at our lives, when we're not at church, we look like a different channel. Amen. And I don't even want to talk about the channel that sometimes plays in our mind. Wow. See, Peter said he loved Jesus, but, but, but when, when there was a ministry need, when there was something that needed to be done, when there's a healing that had to take place, Couldn't get the job done. The man had, had brought his child to Peter and, and, and the other apostles, and, and, and he'd said, there's a devil in my child. And Peter's like, I know exactly what to do. I used to run with the devil. I know exactly what to do. I used to walk that way. But Peter and the other apostles, they had no power over the devil that was in this boy. Because the devil knew just what kind of latte they liked. He knew their favorite Netflix show. And he knew the words to say. father in desperation comes to Jesus and the father in, in desperation says to Jesus I begged your disciples to cast it out but what I can't hear you today but they what they could not they, could. they did not they could not they could not because you can't cast the devil out of the lives of others if you're still in a secret romance with him. Wow. How is he going to respect you when he's like, that's okay, I'm going to see you Thursday night. Goo -goo -goo. <laughs> oh, Peter, you're going to talk to me like that? Well, just wait till Jesus gives John and James a little bit more attention than you. Oh, you're afraid of the temple guard? Let's see who you really love. Wow. The man begged the 
disciples of Jesus. Cast this demon out of my boy. They could not. They wanted to. They could not. They would. But they could. Jesus looks at that father and he looks back at his disciples and here's what he says. He says, Oh, faithless and twisted generation. How long Am I to be with you and to bear with you? Bring your son here. I wonder, does Jesus get frustrated with us sometimes? Sometimes I don't make it to Tuesday. And I hear Jesus saying to me in my prayer life, I hope you got one. Because if you don't got one, you're really in trouble because then he can't even speak to you. Jesus tells me on Tuesday, I saw you cheating on Monday. Or maybe he says on Wednesday, why are you flirting? I saw you looking down that alley. What do you think's down there? How long are other people's children going to be remain possessed by demons because you and I are in a part-time relationship? Was it Stevie Wonder who coined the term part-time lovers? Sometimes that's the condition of the church. And you know how to tell how effective are you being in ministry. Now, if you're not in ministry, then I'm going to suggest that you're not a part-time lover. And I don't mean that in a good way. I don't mean that in a faithful way. But Jesus, he goes to that boy. And, and the devil fights. The devil even fights Jesus. And the devil throws that boy down on the ground. And the devil makes foam come out of that boy's mouth. And, and the devil attacks that boy like never before. And the devil tries to throw him into the fire. But I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. Let the devil throw them down. Let the devil try to put them in the fire. Let the devil cause foam to come out of the mouth. When he's dealing with Jesus, he's going to lose. So I want him to deal with Jesus in my life. Jesus is effective. Because Jesus is in constant, continual relationship with his Father. Jesus says, there's nothing I do. There's nothing I say. There's, there, there, there's nothing I try that I didn't hear my Father tell me to do. That I didn't listen to my Father. That my Father didn't show me. There's nothing luring you down that aisle. You've been down that alley. You know what's down there. You know that it is no good to you. You know that it does not satisfy your heart. You know it does not make you feel better. You know it just throws you on the ground, makes foam come out of your mouth. It tries to put you in the fire. But if you just let Jesus, just let Jesus touch you. 
If only the people around you love you enough to take you to the disciples of Jesus to be healed. But will they be able? And the answer is, if the disciples of Jesus are connected to Jesus. And they were what? What? Uh, you, they were what? You don't sound astonished. They were what? Astonished. They were astonished with what? At the majesty. The majesty of God. Look, I don't know how to heal people. I, 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 I don't know how to cast demons out. I don't even have any good holy water to throw at people. But if I am connected to the majesty of God, people will be astonished. Because it's not going to be me who lifts the boy up. It's going to be Jesus. It's not going to be me who cleans out his life. It is going to be Jesus. It is going to be Jesus. Now, if I'm going to clean out other people's lives, if I am going to take someone thrown on the ground, foaming at the mouth, clean it up like this, I have to be clean first. And I have to be clean the same way they have to be clean. And that cleaning is the same. I can't do it. In the same way, listen to me, church. In the same way, I can't cast. I can't cast demons out of other people's lives. I certainly can't cast demons out of my life. Now, this is a scary turn in the sermon. But you can't cast demons out of your life either. You and I, we go to the demon, and we have every bit the good results that Peter and the others had with that little boy. You see, that's what happens whenever you come face to face with sin. That's what happens whenever you come face to face with evil. That's what happens whenever you choose to embrace the darkness. That's what happens whenever you think you have power to defeat the devil. Two chapters later in Luke 11, Jesus brings this point home of what happens when we try to heal demon-possessed if they be of other people or if they be of ourselves. Listen to what he says in Luke 11, verse 24. When an unclean spirit has gone where? Out of a person. It passes through the what? Waterless places. The waterless places, or the dry places, seeking what? Rest. Seeking rest. See, they don't give up easy. They don't open their Dear John letters. They like to mark them, return to sender. If you go to your mailbox, and you find mail in your mailbox on Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Thursday, or Sabbath morning, and it's marked return to sender, you just shred it! You send it away for a reason. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through the waterlessness places, looking for rest and finding none. It says, I will return from where I have. What? 
Yeah. Return to my house from where I have came. Return to sender. Dear John, return to sender. And when it comes and it finds the house what? Swept. Swept and what? Put in order. Now this don't sound right. This don't sound right, Marvin. I've done cleaned the house up. I vacuumed. I did the dishes. I at least hid the dirty laundry under the couch. Come on, you do it too. I got all the closet doors closed. And what happens? Then it goes out and it brings seven other spirits. What? More evil than itself. And they, what? Dwell there. And what? The last state of that person is what? Is worse than the first. And here is the problem, church. Here is the problem. We're writing repeated Dear John letters. And we're sending them out. Some of us are sending them out every week. How many times are you going to break this relationship up? Why are you taking that return to sender mail out of the box? Don't you bring that back in your house. There's a reason you sent it out. You know why you bring it back out? It told us. The Spirit finds your house clean and in order. The Spirit finds everything swept and put away. And you know what he sees when he sees that? Hallelujah, I found a liar. You make the devil praise God. He found a liar. Because there is no one's house that is tidy. There is no one's house that is completely swept. There is no one here who can get your life in order. And when the devil finds someone who has their house cleaned out, who has their house sweeped out, and have everything in order, he knows you're lying. And he knows you did that yourself. And any casting out devils done by yourself only results in seven more demons coming. The first step to being changed is admitting I can't clean my house. The first step to being changed is admitting I can't get it together. The first step in being justified is admitting I am powerless over the temptations of Netflix and chill. If we're going to be changed, we got to be cleaned Amen. by something better than Peter. We got to be cleaned by something better than John and James. We've got to be cleaned by the love of Jesus breaking through. We got to stop writing Dear John letters and just write Ah, dear John letter. And we got to stop going out the mailboxes and bringing in return to sender letters. We've got to understand this one thing. This is my last verse. We've got to understand this last verse. The reason it's called a dear John letter. The reason it's called a Dear John letter is John has the answer to Luke's problem. Light shines where? 
in the darkness. In the darkness what? The darkness has what? The darkness has what? The darkness has not overcome it. Don't you straighten your house up perfectly. Let the light of Jesus shine in you. He might clean up your bedroom first. He might clean up your kitchen first. He might delete your Netflix app first. I don't know if he changes the dial on your radio or your Spotify list. I don't know. But the difference between the light shining in the darkness is there's no pretension that the house is all clean and sweeped up all at once. Because when you find the house clean and sweeped up all at once, you better check the closet. And you better look under the couch. And you better see what's stuffed in the oven. Because Jesus shines light in the parts of your life. Don't be anxious. Don't be overwhelmed. Don't fall into the trap of thinking you have to fix everything at once. No. Light shines into what? Darkness. The darkness. You have darkness. I know it. You know it. We know it. Stop pretending we don't. Because if you have no darkness, where is the light going to shine? Light shines into the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. You need to write your dear John letter. That is John 1.5. You need to understand the postage is Jesus. You don't want it coming back. The postage is Jesus. Letters come back when you put the wrong postage on them. The postage is not Saul. The postage is not Shelby. The postage is not Tina. The postage is not Joy. The postage is not Orlando. The postage is not Carletta. The postage is not Jen. The postage is not Lori. The postage is Jesus. And if you don't want that letter coming back, write that Dear John letter and you seal it. Do you hear me? Seal it with the right postage. You let God's love break through. And I love the picture. Because when God's love breaks through, there's still a mess. Because when God cleans your house, it takes a lifetime. And I'm not ashamed of the mess. Because justification is the work of a second. Anyone know this quote? Justification is the work of a second. But sanctification is the work of a lifetime. Love breaks through the darkness and works on one area at a time. And if you empty it out, if you sweep it all out all at once, there's a void. And seven spirits come back. Let Jesus sweep it out, and he fills the room as he takes away the hidden stuff under the couch, under the bed, in the cupboard, and hidden deeply in the app folder. Let Jesus be your postage. Let Jesus fill your void. Let Jesus and his light and his love break through. Marvin, will you lead us?
Like a foolish dreamer trying to build a highway to the sky, all my hopes would come tumbling down, and I never knew just why. Until today, when you pulled away the clouds that hung like curtains on my eyes well I've been blind all these wasted years and I thought I was so wise but then you took me by surprise like waking up from the longest dream how real it seemed until your love broke through i've been lost in a fantasy that blinded me until your love broke through all my life i've been searching for that crazy missing part and with one touch you just rolled away the stone that held my heart now I see that the answer was so easy as just asking you when and I'm so sure I could never doubt your gentle touch again it's like the power of the wind like waking up from the longest dream how real it seemed until your love broke through i've been lost in a fantasy that blinded Until your love broke through Until your love broke through If If you want to start a relationship with Jesus. If you want the power to break the darkness in your life. If you want the power that eventually Peter got. Where it says in the book of Acts he didn't even have to touch someone who was possessed any longer. But even when his shadow fell across them in the street, they were delivered. Because that's the power of God's love breaking through your darkness. What you once couldn't do, no matter how you tried, what you once couldn't do, no matter how long you spent on the mountain with Jesus, when, when, when his love breaks through, just your presence will be enough to heal people. But you have to wake up from the dream. You have to wake up from the fantasy. You've got to let go of the destructive love affair with the devil you've been on. 
No man can serve two masters. He will love one and hate the other. I wake up from the dream. It's just a dream. It's just a fantasy. You, you, you got to put the right postage on the Dear John letter so that it stops coming back. It's Dear John. Dear John 1 verse 5. Dear John 1 verse 5. Light comes into the darkness. The darkness cannot overcome it. Me and Julia were talking about that backstage before we came in here. What do we do about the darkness that is still in people? We got to start putting the right postage on the envelope. And please understand light comes into darkness. Don't pretend your house is all in order. If your house isn't all in order, your house isn't all in order. Amen. Let the light come in to darkness. Stop living the dream. The dream, the fantasy is this idea that you can worship on Sabbath. And worship on Sunday a different being. Send it away. Write the Dear John letter. The address is 1-5. The postage is the blood of Jesus Christ. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up from the fantasy. Because there are people waiting for you to heal them. Like a foolish dreamer trying to build a highway to the sky, all my hopes would come tumbling down, and I never knew just why. Until today, away the clouds that hung like curtains on my eyes well I've been blind all these wasted years and I thought I was so wise but then you took me by surprise like waking up from the longest dream, how real it seemed until your love broke through. I've been lost in a fantasy that blinded me. Until your love broke through. Until your love broke through. Until your love broke through. What's your memory verse? John, what? One. John what? One five. My hearing's off today. John what? One five. John what? One five. There are people, little children, waiting to you, for you to pick them up off the ground and awake them from the nightmare that we too often see as a dream. Address it, John 1, 5, postage, the blood of Jesus. Get it in the mailbox. Do not take anything marked return to sender back. Dear Heavenly Father, these are your children. 
These are your doctors. These are your healers. These are your hands. These are your feet. These are your tools. These are your technicians. These are your grace going out into the world, rescuing little children, rescuing full-grown men and women, rescuing people just like us because your love has broke through. Heal them and bring them on time next week, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing hallelujah.